why would you want your kids to go through a journey like mine? In the next 50 or 60 years, the vaccine has the potential of preventing like 19 million cervical cancer cases and 10 million cervical cancer deaths. I mean, it's, it's huge. These are women that are somebody's mom, somebody's aunt, somebody's grandmother, somebody's somebody something, and, then, and they're not supposed to be dying. In 2008, I went to see the oncologist, and he was the one who told me, I'm sorry to say, but uh, you have cancer, cervical cancer. He told us that it, it came from the human papillomavirus, the HPV, which I never even heard of it. HPV is a sexually transmitted virus. It's common. Most people get it at some point in their life and clear it. But a few strains can cause cancer if they persist. Patty Merlocasa was diagnosed with stage 2B cervical cancer. And I had to go every single day for my radiation and once a week for my chemo. And it was just a lot, a lot, you know. There were some days that my husband had to take over. And I used to tell him, just leave, leave me, I, you know, I'm ready. Now, you know, it's preventable. The HPV vaccine is like an immunological grand slam. It prevents most cervical cancer as well as other HPV-linked cancers. It was developed at the NIH, and at first it was considered a real long shot because there hadn't been much previous success making a vaccine for a sexually transmitted virus. You know, there were a lot of people who were skeptical. Most of the companies said, no, thank you very much, but we're not interested. Probably kicking themselves now because it's multi-billion dollar you know, drug, so. This multi-billion dollar drug was born out of experiments by these two, John Schiller and Doug Lowy. They developed the vaccine together. They've been collaborating for 30 years. And we've never had really a fight, I don't think. It, 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 is a real, it is a real partnership. I don't think either of us I mean, have the sort of ego where we need to have all the, all the credit. He can do things that I simply can't do. They began their work on HPV by trying to understand the genetic underpinnings of how the virus causes cancer. It was only after we had worked together for quite a number of years that we turned our attention to the coat of the virus. The coat was key to the vaccine. So here's how it works. Viruses have a coat that holds their inner infectious parts. If you can figure out how to fabricate just the coat, and make it look just like the real thing, you can put that harmless coat in your body and use it to train the immune system to recognize the virus. Then, if you get the real virus, your body is primed to attack. So that was the concept. And in this strange twist for science, it all kind of worked. It was surprisingly easy. Yeah, it, it turned out to rem be remarkably easy. The vaccine was released in 2006. It has proven protective, safe, and long-lasting. That's what I was saying before, that this, this vaccine always exceeded expectations. Except in one key way. Compared to other adolescent vaccines, the papillomavirus vaccine is underutilized. It's not being utilized hardly at all in, in lower and middle income countries where most of the cervical cancer occurs. In America, too, it's underutilized. Only about 40% of girls and 30% of boys in the U.S. get the full recommended dosage. I've been cancer-free for eight years. This is what I would say to parents. Vaccination, you are protecting your kids from a cancer. You're protecting the kids from a journey like mine.